All right, so I'm back at the same place I left off in the last video. And what I'm going to do here is actually change my PF sense so that it is an actual private network connected to a public network. Right now, we are a private network behind a NAT. Okay, so if we click here on outbound, we see, notice here it says automatic outbound NAT rule generation. This means we're using NAT here. I wanna disable it. And actually I can do that right now, but that will break my internet, which is actually, you know, it's okay. And so I guess what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna break my internet and save it. And typically this is normal for PFSense. You have to save and then hit apply changes. And what happens here is I've broken my internet. And so if I get here, if I try to go to a website, it should just not work. I'm not even gonna try because it's really not worth trying. What I need to do now is actually on my own network, I need to create a, a static route, okay? In order to do that, I need to have my PFSense have a static IP address, okay? Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about here, um, you've got some stuff to learn, and that's fine. You can do what I do along with me, and then um, hopefully it'll work for you anyway. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to set my interfaces on the PFSense to a fixed IP address, okay? So we're not gonna use DHCP, we're gonna use a static IPv4. For IPv6, I actually am just gonna turn that off. Now I think it's gonna cause an issue in a minute, but now I need to type in the IP address I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna use here 10.0.1. Dot, and I'm gonna just use a low part of my IP address range, or actually I'm not, I'm gonna use a higher part of my IP address range. So we'll put up here 10.0.1, and I'll just call it 10.0.1.5. And of course I didn't pick that out of the air, I picked it because that's the one that I've reserved for my PFSense. I also need a WAN gateway, and this way I need to know the IP address of my upstream gateway. So this is my WAN gateway. I don't really need a description here. This is for situations where you'd have multiple gateways. Uh, we're just gonna hit add there. So my IP address, 10.0.1.5, fixed IP address, and here we are at 10.0.1.1, okay? We already unchecked this, and we hit save here again and we're going to need to apply changes. <laughs> okay, changes applied successfully, we're very excited. I'm not going to change the LAN IP address, okay? This is definitely a static. Um, this is the, range, the IP of this, there's no gateway here. Um, like this stuff is just normal. In some situations, especially for my students, each person is going to be on a separate 192.168 network, and that would be what you would change yours here to. You also change the, um, the DHCP scope to match it. Let me just show you that here. If I go to DHCP server, we say we're enabled, and that's fine. It's to automatically give out IP addresses, which is what happened to this Windows server. And notice here, we did a range 192.168.1.10. It's automatically created 192.168.1.245. And that's uh, very exciting to go with that. And so, anyway, this is normal. If, oh, I'm here because if I'm on, you know, I've changed my subnet, see so 192.168.1. If I change it to 192.168.5, let's say, I would also want to change this range to 192.168.5.10, 192.168.5.245. But since I didn't change anything, I'm gonna leave it as it is. Oh, notice here my internet has decided it, it doesn't work, which indeed it shouldn't. 
All right, for a second now I need to switch. Let me go back to my interface WAN. And remember here, we change it to 10.0.1.5. And now what I need to do is create a static routing entry. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this up for a minute or while it's doing that. And I'm actually gonna start here and connect to my, uh, my router at home and put in a, a static route for this. All right, so here I am. I'm logged in to my, um, the router on my home network. And what I'm gonna do is add a static route. That happens here. I'm on TP link here. This happens under the advanced routing tab. So I click that. Notice here we already see a static routing and there's nothing on this list. So I need to add a static route. My destination network is that 192.168.1. And I'm just gonna put dot zero here. For the subnet mask, by the way, the dot zero is gonna be masks. And hopefully you remember what a mask means because I'm masking it at 255.255.255.0. And so that will match my PFSense virtual box. Let me pop that up really quickly to the front. Notice here the PFSense virtual box. Actually, let me refresh this page. PFSense on the LAN side, 192.168.1.124. This means that's the entire network, 192.168.1. And here, the default gateway is that WAN IP address, the 10.0.1.5. So I'm gonna put that in here, 10.0.1.5. Now I hit save. And what this does is it tells my home router that anything that needs to go to the destination 192.168.1. something needs to go to the computer or the router at 10.0.1.5. And again, this is matching, directly matching PFSense, right? So let me get out of this then. We can just log out and close it. All right, so we are back here. And before I do anything else, I'm just gonna kind of, this is kind of crazy, but I'm actually just gonna reboot this. So we're gonna hit at number five here and we're gonna reboot normally. And I'm just gonna let that reboot. When I come back to here, let me capture my mouse back. When I come back here, this is gonna be gone anyway. So we're gonna wait for that to reboot. And what we're doing here is, you know, this is a VM. There's, I don't know, you just got a clean house. So I guess I should warn you, this is, this is one of those situations of if something breaks, you just reboot. So, come on, baby. Let me scroll this back up. So this will just be out. Notice also I'm not gonna click into that because I don't wanna lose my mouse, but it's not a big deal, I guess. We're waiting for the little thing to come up, and there it is. So now notice if I just go back to like the status, where is the status? I don't remember what status is. Um, let's go back to, actually, I just want to do this. I'm going to go into general setup anyway, because we're going to need to, but here we're going to need to log in. Make sure you, uh -huh, have the right password. This is the one you changed it to. Okay, so we're back here. Oh, status dashboard. All right, so. Notice here I still have no internet. That is likely because of, in here, general setup, I need to have a DNS server. DNS resolution behavior, that is really strange. Let's go ahead and do a diagnostic here just to see what's going on. Reset it, that's kind of lame. All right. Let's do a very small amount of troubleshooting. That looks okay. Make 
make sure we can hit the PF sense. Oh, that's a fun one. Ping. Oops, I can't put a dot at the end of that. That ping looks okay. Let's double check that we can ping our main router. And that looks okay. Oh, and now suddenly our, notice here our network is working. Well, that's kind of funny. All right, we're going to double check here. Just do a google.com. And Google looks fine. So it looks like we're good to go. Now, one way to check this is if we do a ping. Oops, let me just do this this way. Maybe is it in the mood? Let's go to our terminal and let's do a ping of 192.168.1.100. Okay. Request timeout. That is not working. I'll stop that then. That is not working. I wonder what the deal is. Oh, uh -huh. I should know this already. This needs to be in the firewall. And what I have to do actually is enable a ping to be allowed. And that has to go in two places. Let me just do this here. You're gonna wonder what's going on. I want firewall that's in file and print sharing. And I need echo request for version four. And I need to enable this rule. Then I need to actually go into my PF sense and I need to go to the firewall rules. And on this side, I actually need to add a rule here that's going to allow ICMP, where are you, ICMP, echo requests also, echo request, thank you. And I will allow any pinging from in or out. I'm going to apply the changes. Now we can flip back to our terminal, ping that, and then we get our, sure enough, it did not time out. All right, so sometimes I forget what I'm doing apparently, and, but we have successfully now, we've finished configuring our PF sense to at least be there on the network. And actually one of the things we just did with this firewall rule allowing this traffic is actually making it a little less secure because now we'll, on this internal network, respond to pings. All right, so looking forward to the next video, I'm sure. So let me close this out and thank you very much.